Like Wenceslas, with footprints strangely blessed, through Sussex lanes by downland heights and coombs, as pilgrims then had journeyed here to rest, we came in snow to view the empty rooms. We first came here uh, on a very snowy day, very, very cold, icy. Something seemed to pull at us, and we thought, this is very sad looking. It was, the gardens were non non-existent virtually. Everyone, when we mentioned it to friends, said, uh, well, uh, frankly, you're mad. <laughs> You know, don't touch it with a barge pole. You don't know what you're letting yourself in for. But one friend in particular said, if you've got a gut reaction to it, go for it. And we thought, well, we do have that feeling, so why not? And that was the bottomless pit, as it were. <laughs> the hero never knows what's going to be over the top when he jumps for it. You know, if you go over the top, you know, you, you hope it's going to be all right. And so we did not know how much work there would be. People think, oh, they must be fabulously wealthy and so on. Not at all. We had the zeal to restore an ancient building. Roger had all the skills and uh, we worked together. I held the planks and things, and Roger did the final work. And I did the administration and the finance and, and so on, and saw the money running away like water. In the beginning, it was a blank canvas, and we were just, you know, mesmerised by it in a way. Um, I mean, where we're sitting now, there was nothing here. This was just weeds and rubble. I remember measuring out these borders here. This represents the Queen's Golden Jubilee in the form of the Union, well, basic form of the Union Jack. I mean, we received MBEs from the Queen in 2006 uh, and uh, that was not something we necessarily brag about, it's, it's simply that it was for, some, for the house, it was really the house that won the MBEs. It's wonderful for us to see people going around enjoying it. And when we meet them, if we ever say, or dare to say, you know, how are you enjoying your visit? Then there's a whole explanation of why, how wonderful and, and how beautiful and so on. So the reaction is very comforting, I must say. When you walk by outside, you, you wouldn't think this was here, would you? And it's amazing. It's overwhelming how large it, it, it actually is. It's also incredibly beautiful and very well looked after. It's an amazing place. It's a hidden gem in Upper Beading and Bremba. It's, it's beautiful. I personally love this area, actually, uh, particularly with the pond. I think it's yes. extremely peaceful just there. And I'd love to have a go on the boat at some <laughs> stage. <laughs> what do you do with a house like this? when you've restored it, you can't risk it going into the wrong hands. So the only way we could decide to do it would be to make a trust and put it into it. Some people have said to us, well, you know, you've done all this work over 35 years or more, and you're not benefiting from it personally, you're giving it away, so why? And we haven't got an answer to that, really. <laughs> <laughs> we must be mad. We could be living in the south of France now or something, but we're not. I'm jolly glad we're not. I love it all, uh, and we've planned it together, 
uh, and I admire enormously what Roger's done to recreate a garden that is now one of the most visited gardens in Sussex. And that's uh, our achievement, really. And we can now allow it to go on through the trust. And we can sit around and enjoy what we've created. The years have passed. The saving has been done. Though joys and sadnesses have marked our days, our labours less, our vision all but one. Time-honoured house, surpassing all our praise.